Search your feelings. You know it to be true. HLG performs better than Log. No! 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 Log is better than HLG! Join me, and together we can rule the internets and bring this conflict to an end. Hey everybody, today on the camera department, we're gonna talk about Log versus HLG, and can it work for you? One of the things that, that I've seen a lot of people get really excited about is having HLG on their GH5, and I just wanna talk a little bit about that. So it is a very awesome piece of technology, the, the camera that is, and the fact that it gives us both the option for log and HLG is great, but I've seen a lot of people using HLG uh, as kind of a workaround for log, which is a great idea and, and it does work, but there's some fundamental differences between the two that I think are worth talking about. I don't think one has a place over the other, but if you really wanna see what we're talking about, check out the answer, because it's coming up very, very soon. But before we get there, I just wanna give a quick plug uh, to ourselves, a shameless plug, that is. No! Yes! Uh, if you haven't seen them yet, we put out some uh, LUTs. Now these LUTs were handcrafted by Jeff and myself. We shot some scenes. We have daylight interior, uh, tungsten interior, which is free, by the way. So the, the tungsten LUT is absolutely free. Interior tungsten is free for download. There's daylight exterior uh, in the sun, so it's harsh lighting, and there's daylight exterior in the shade. And from what people have said, including one of our dear friends, Ichidomo, everybody's kind of digging on these LUTs because they neutralize and balance the footage and just give you a nice, beautiful platform to start from. That's what this video was using, or this video has been filmed with, rather. Uh, we're using one of those LUTs now, the free one, by the way, again, free. Uh, there's a link there. I'll post it. It'll also be in the show notes. If you want to check it out, there's that. So let's start looking at some of this footage and have a quick conversation about literally, can HLG match up with log? That's a separate issue, but let's just talk about them side by side and just look at some of the differences that may help you shoot your HLG footage or your log footage even better. All right. So one of the things about HLG uh, and log looking at them side by side, uh, First off, let me say this, you can get some absolutely beautiful imagery. So what I wanted to show here is just uh, some shots. Uh, this first one is, uh, heck, I don't even know, I'm gonna have to look it up here in a second, but here's some footage, just nice little, you know, lifestyle-y type stuff I shot over the break. Uh, here's another set of footage. Uh, they both look fantastic to me. One has a little bit more of a darker element than the other, but they both look great. Um, let's go back and see what those are, just so, you know, we know where we stand. So that first shot there is actually, let's see, that's HLG. So that's an HLG shot. And so what we've done is we've uh, taken that HLG footage and put it onto, or put it into Premiere and applied a LUT to it. So let's go back one step, because this is pretty important. So one of the things about HLG is it shoots in a color space called BT 2020, right? So 2020 is a very specific color space. It's used for HDR, it's used for uh, 2K prints, it's used for 4K prints. It's a color space that you, you kind of have to employ when you get to a certain level of, of correcting content and building things. So that particular uh, color space and color science, or I, I, color space is the right word, but that piece of color space is very important for HDR and again, high res type content. The catch to it is though, that until recently, um, only DaVinci was the, was the only one that I found that could actually allow you to select and work natively in that HLG, again, 2020 color space. And that made it a little bit tricky. So one of the challenges, well, the other side of that, the recent portion of that conversation is that Final Cut Pro X now allows you to work uh, natively in BT 2020. So again, if you're shooting HLG, you can finally bring it in and work in 2020. The downside to that is things like Premiere and Avid and so forth, they're still working in a Rec 709 color space. No matter what you do, it's gonna force it in a Rec 709. So if you are a Premiere user and you want to use HLG, just keep in mind, you're going to have to do some sort of transform, color transform to take it from 2020 to 709. Jeff has that LUT. We'll have it available at some point. Not a shameless plug, but it's it's beneficial. It'll help you. It helps us whenever we have to deal with it. There's some catches to it. There's a lot of other stuff. But the, the thing that we need to do, what we need to do is look at the side-by-side -side comparison. So this is a, a, a basically a metadata reader called Invisor. And what it shows is, is uh, what all the, the clip has in metadata. So what I want to do is put them side-by-side. -side. And for the most part, 
they're identical on the top level, right? Almost every aspect of it is 100% identical. Um, obviously the timing is different because I record a different length, but everything is identical, including the bit rate. So the bit rate itself is 395. The bit rate is 395. Uh, frame size is the same. Pixel aspect is the same. Of course, that shouldn't change. All of it is the same. Then you get into your um, standard uh, in terms of, I'm sorry, then you get your color space. It's YUV. The chroma sampling is 422 on both. Exactly the same. They're both 10 bit. But here's where it gets interesting. Look at the color range function. The color range of the HLG is limited versus that of uh, Rec. 709, which is full, and that makes a tremendously big difference. And the reason why that's such a big difference is basically the limited color range of HLG says that it starts at 16 and it goes to 235. There you go. Starts at 16 and goes to 235, limiting the amount of color coming in to protect, uh, think of it like broadcast save. It's protecting the, the something from getting oversaturated versus that of log uh, when you're working in Rec. 709 log, it's full, meaning you're getting zero to 250. So, or 255? 255. Yeah, you're getting zero to 255. So all of a sudden now, you know, if you look at it just based on that, the limited color space of HLG versus the full color space of log, that's something to consider when you begin shooting. They're different ideas, different tools, different processes, but one has full color range, the other has limited color range. I thought that was pretty important. Just wanted to show it out. That's just a quick, simple thing that we've come across. So back into some of the footage. Let's look at it um, again with a more critical eye. Now I shot this kind of like not on a professional level. I mean, I didn't bring out a bunch of lights. I didn't much, uh, no grip gack. In fact, I didn't even have Jeff there with me. It was just me over the holiday break shooting some stuff. So again, we've seen the first video with the uh, leaves and the sun. That's very pretty, yay. But then we jump into this next set. This is where I wanna show that color bit. If you remember, I said HLG is limited color space, meaning it's 16 to 235. Uh, log is full color space, zero to 255. And you can see a difference even when you're shooting, but this is interesting. This first shot here, you can kind of see, um, you know, season's greetings and it's, uh, there's, there's daylight coming in with some blue light and the cup is red and green and there's shadow and light. And then you shift over and suddenly that red looks a little more pleasing, at least to my eye. And the green looks better. It's not oversaturated. And you get that same element of moving, uh, of color space bouncing back and forth. And it looks really rich and nice. Now, me personally, I don't like a very crushed image. So I will tell you that first shot, this first shot here is, is HLG. So this is an HLG shot that's been transformed because I'm working in Premiere and Premiere only allows me to work in Rec. 709, which means it is forcing me to take a 2020 color space which is HLG, put it onto a timeline, which is Rec. 709, and I have no way of controlling it, so I'm not seeing the native color space, which is a detractor if you're working in Premiere. Final Cut X, you get a little more latitude out of it. You get a little more fun. You get you have a little more creativity. But again, we're looking at color in this space. We're not talking about dynamic range, only color. And if you look at them side by side and watch the compar comparative here, all I did was keep the camera the same, make an adjustment, uh, and go forward. So you can see that the color difference between the two, pretty dramatic. In my opinion, it's pretty dramatic. It's not a skewed result. It's just a dramatic raw piece of putting it down. The other side of that when we get into it is kind of looking at the highlight control. Uh, do you have more highlight control in log? Do you have more highlight control in HLG because it is an HDR function? In an HDR format, that's different. But looking at HLG again as a Rec. 709, like putting on a Rec. 709 timeline, we have this clip here. This is going to be uh, a Rec. 709 clip. Again, just a glass orb. You can see the bokeh, the detail. I'm fishing around with it, just having fun. Um, setting up some content. And there's nice little pieces. You can see the highlights and the speculars. Look how suddenly darker that shot gets. So I'm already pushing this. This is uh, at 1600 ISO. I'm already pushing it and you can see a difference in it. There's a little more detail to me in that HLG shot. So if detail and sharpness is something you're really after, I feel like HLG captures that really well. But in the, the highlight elements only, um, I feel like there's more detail in the HLG highlights than there is that of the uh, Rec. 709 or log highlights. Part of that too is, is that the HLG automatically pulls it down. If you notice uh, between these clips, I didn't adjust the iris. I just let it play where it was. And you can see a variation in those. And I will show you iris adjustment towards the end of the video. But in this case, keeping them the same, there's a pretty big discrepancy between the two images when you drop this LUT on, this transform LUT, so that it does display the color correction properly. Otherwise, I found that just grading that footage just 
just gets a little bit crazy, right? So then we're gonna move on to talk about this. This is the interesting side to me. This is the dynamic range element. So I've heard a lot of people say that they believe HLG has a better dynamic range, and I disagree with it wholeheartedly. I think, first off, I think the fact that the color space is limited in HLG versus full in Rec. 709 does not affect dynamic range, but it does affect the final image. So I'm a little more biased to log in that capacity. But when you put these two shots together, again, this was shot at 1600 ISO, and I'm just gonna let it rip here. I just panned down the Christmas tree. This first one is log. The second shot, again, not touching anything. Everything's staying exactly the same, just switching it inside the camera. Uh, you can see that it is way darker. It is crushing it. It's bringing up the floor because even though it has range, it doesn't have the same level of dynamic range of that of uh, Log. Log just does better. And there's a whole conversation with Jeff Boyle out there, who's a, a pretty famous DP, who talks about why Log is such a great tool because it is in the maximization of your, of your dynamic range. And he's right. And he's talking about with an Alexa or any camera really at that matter. Uh, it is the maximized way to utilize dynamic range. But I, I would not be happy with this image here if, if I were um, trying to work with it. It just doesn't work for me. Now, you, the beauty of HLG is I can pop this card straight out of my camera, upload that footage straight to YouTube, it triggers on YouTube, and it's a beautiful HDR image. It's not graded, but it's a beautiful HDR image. So if you're conscious of how you wanna shoot things and you wanna show off that amount of detail and see something fun, that's a brilliant feature that, that, that the GH5 has with its HLG process, is that even though the color's limited, it still looks really good in HDR when you can view it. But right now, the only affordable way to view HDR is either using a Sumo, uh, which is made by Atomos, or it's uploading it to YouTube directly and dealing it that way. That's for HLG. For 709, however, you can go through a whole bunch of processes and create lots and lots of different content that you can then upload to YouTube and look at. It's just a, it's logs just an easier way of doing it. Not to take away from Final Cut. Final Cut introduced those options as well. I have not personally touched them. Uh, our friend Will did. Will's talked about it. He said it's very easy to take some footage and then prep it for HDR. So Final Cut Pro, uh, is taking a leap forward and they're then they're buying into the idea of hdr uh, maybe it matters maybe it doesn't in this video it doesn't because we're only talking about hlg and log can you put them side by side and find something great now you've probably wondered like where did i come up with all this stuff and how did i like you know formulate my opinion well i took those shots and i saw them and i was a little disappointed but then i went outside and just like the green leafy stuff at the beginning then i shot these wide shots and these wide shots this is where HLG shines for me. I believe HLG outside looks phenomenal. I think exteriors, when you have a ton of light and you can kind of control it more, it looks great. So what you're seeing here is Rec. 709. Again, we've dropped just one of our LUTs, our daylight exterior LUT. I believe it's the shade version. I just dropped it directly onto it. It turned out to look fantastic. And then we're going to see that's the HLG version, equally fantastic. I, I can't even really tell them apart. It's a very limited level in which I can tell them apart, including the color side. It's very difficult to tell them apart. Jeff did a great job on the transform LUT, but the camera itself does a great job of mixing those two together to create something really, really unique and beautiful. So I'm happy with it in that way. So HLG versus log, just keep in mind, HLG has a limited color range versus that of, uh, of log, which is a full color range. Pretty big difference if you're into that kind of stuff and you're really interested in making sure you get the maximum amount of gains from your footage as possible. Max gains, bro! If that's what you're into, just maybe consider checking out Log. Don't forget, we have some LUTs available. We'd love for you guys to check them out. There's a free one for you. It's a tungsten-based LUT, so if you're shooting indoors with regular light bulbs, tungsten light, uh, that is free. The rest of the pack contains three more LUTs plus the V-LUT, so you can actually load them onto your camera and match them, so you have a matching LUT for post, uh, you have a matching LUT while you shoot, and everything looks happy-pappy when you're done. Plus, every single sale we make on that, we're giving away 50% of that towards a family in need. It's our friends the Depews. They, uh, his wife got diagnosed with acute myeloid le leukemia, and so we're trying to just give them the best and their kids the best Christmas possible uh, because they, they had to be away from their kids for the holiday season, which makes this video slightly irrelevant if you're watching it in second fact, but that's what we're doing and it's important and current right now. So hopefully you learned something from that portion of it. If you have any questions, feel free to hit us up. 
Drew at craftshow.com, Jeff at craftshow.com. We'll answer them best we can. Throw them in the comments. We like to chat there. The live stream is on Tuesdays. I think we're going to try one after the epic hangover that may occur for, uh, for New Year's Eve. But if you want to hang out with us, come join us in the live stream Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Central Time. I guess that's all I really got to say. Yes, I didn't tangent. <laughs>